Yeah, g'day. Welcome back to my channel. My name's Mark. In the last week I was playing around with broaching blind square holes and it wasn't working that well for me so I figured I'd play around this week and try and work out what I was doing wrong. So for last week's attempt I was using this silver steel hardened brooch that I ground up and of course it fell apart. So it's time to scrounge through my damaged cutter box. Oh yeah, that looks like a 10 millimeter. So if I whip those flutes off, I'll grind a new brooch out of the shaft. To grind the four flats, I'm going to use my indexer. This is kind of a scungy old thing that I picked up second hand, but I thought I'd better introduce it. Let's pull it apart, clean it up, and do a little job on it. It takes the same collets as my little Bolly manual lathe. I bought this from some guy in his basement. Just looking at it, it it's hard to tell, was this an apprentice project, in which case the guy probably failed due to poor surface finish, or somebody whipped it up for a very specific job and didn't put a lot of effort into the optics of the thing. I guess it's probably the latter. It works very well, with one caveat, and that is, there's no anti-rotation on the collets. So I want to have a look and see if I can fix that. Because all collets have a slot machined in them and you normally have in the lathe spindle a hardened pin coming out which engages with that slot as your anti-rotation feature. Anyway, let's pull this apart and see what's in it. The way it indexes, this is just a set of plungers. There are two sets of holes for, I guess there's eight or six holes. There must be a second plate that was made for it for the six holes. Not sure if I ever got that. Don't think I did. And in this part of the body, there's some spring-loaded pins. So this device presses those pins out of the way, and then you can rotate, and it locks. The thing I really like about this design is that it locks really quite rigidly. There's basically no movement in the index position. There's also a hole in the bottom, but I don't think it's threaded. Had a look down it with a torch before. So, there's a thread here, so I'm guessing that this unscrews. I wonder what they were using it for. It seems to have been used as an anvil at some stage. locking pins with their springs. Only two in there, I'm not sure if there should be more. Aha, that looks promising. I wonder if that's supposed to have like a grub screw or something in it for anti-rotation. Since there's already a drill start here, in pretty much exactly the right spot, which doesn't go all the way through, I'll just quickly drill that out. And then tap it to M4. The slot on the collet is three millimeters wide, so I just need to tweak the end of this uh, M4 grub screw. Right, so that's why we have lathes, because that was literally a one minute job. So 
So first up I'll make sure that's screwed in enough to not bind on the outside there. Needs a bit more. Just binding slightly. Okay, that's good. And is it going to work with the collet? That's good. Collet goes in smoothly. But now I have an anti rotation pin. Just to grease it. And lock tighten it in permanently. Right, I'm glad I've done that. One more job that's been kind of bugging me that I didn't do it ages ago. I didn't bother showing, grinding the new colour, because I already did that last week. So I played around with my new colour, this time with a nice lead-in chamfer, which was recommended, maybe some comment. I was turning 1000 RPM and feeding in 10 millimetres per minute, but already the corners are starting to fall off. This one looks almost like it's been worn down a bit, and that one's also chipped. One's still okay, ish. However, there was a comment from HVG that this is the wrong style of rotary brooch for a lathe. Uh, he felt that this rotating style needs to be in a driven spindle going into a stationary workpiece rather than a lathe. Now, I don't quite understand the logic of that. My understanding, and maybe Luke can comment on that because he made it, is that the hole in the housing is offset. The bearing outer diameters are in the angled bore. Hey, speaking of bearings, you know how horizontal stabilizers of aircraft are used for trimming, so therefore they have to pivot? Well, this is what the bearings look like. There's just two of them. The rotating spindle in the middle is concentric, is just round. So this would be my understanding. This tool is always facing down, here very exaggerated. So if we look at that bottom cutting tooth, it's starting to enter the work and engage. And then probably on the second half of that rotation, it's doing its cutting stroke till it gets to the top, which is its bottom of its stroke. And then as it rotates further around, it's again retracting. And all the time, the, it's been constantly advanced into the work. My understanding of that is, this geometry is just the same as a rotating tool gyrating. Funnily enough, some people said it's uh, gyrating. I always thought in New Zealand English it was gyrating, but hey, I've lived in a German-speaking country for 30 odd years, so <laughs> maybe I'm getting my sounds wrong. So the first question for me is, did I understand the tool design correctly? But I still don't understand why it's not working, why it's already breaking cutting edges within one millimeter of engagement. This is only a seven millimeter square tool. Were my feeds and speeds way off if I was only turning it at a thousand RPM and feeding at 10 millimeters per minute? What sort of feeds and speeds would you use if you were broaching with this? 
After watching Inheritance Machining's excellent dissertation on getting all the little jobs done around the shop, I finally installed a decent large light panel above the lathe. I think I've had that panel in its box for about two years. Anyway, just a quick video this week. See you next time. Thanks for watching.